So welcome to Church at Home. Listen, if you are joining us on uh, Facebook or if you're on Church Online, we are so glad that you are with us today. If you're on Instagram or Snapchat, you're on the wrong app and find your way to a screen where you can watch this message at the moment. Listen, before we go any further though, we just got to give a massive shout out, a massive thanks uh, to the team that is bringing Church at Home to life. You know, people like Sam, Seach, uh, Dita, Deanna and Bill, Sarah and Matt, uh, Liana, I'm looking at some names here. There's Joss, Pat and Nat from our worship team. You know, our kids teams are working really hard to create an incredible experience online. I also want to make mention of, you know, our Encompass Care team. They are reaching our community even in these times where it's getting a little bit harder and we are being hands and feet of Jesus in this time. You know, I want to also thank you at home. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for rolling with us as we make these changes and adjustments um, as the week go on. Thank you so much for continually committing yourself to the house and um, loving on the Encompass community. You know, I want to encourage you also, would you jump on our life groups at the moment? Uh, we are running life groups through a platform called Zoom. Zoom is not a car. Um, I would encourage you, uh, if you don't know what Zoom is, either contact our office, write us an email, go to our website or call our help desk. One of our team would love to get you uh, hooked into Zoom so that you you can connect with people in our church face to face. That is what's really important in this time. So as I said, I've got the privilege of sharing the word this morning. Um, but before we go any further, I just want to say, you know, it, it's actually been really difficult uh, to, to write this message. Like, as in, I, I've been really wrestling with, you know, what do you share in this season? You know, um, and I want to be really sensitive to this time, but I also want to make sure that we leave in courage, that we know that God is in control, that the word of God says to us that we can have full confidence in Him and His sovereignty. So right now, you know, we're hearing a lot of reports. You know, even last Sunday, um, you know, Alyssa and I, we were sitting on the couch and we were hearing the prime minister talk about the, the new restrictions. And I'll be honest, like we, we were devastated, like, as in we were hearing these things, knowing the industries that it would affect, knowing the people it would affect. And I remember turning to Alyssa and she was she was bawling her eyes out. It was just it's just a great sense sometimes when we're hearing all these things of sadness. And I just believe that we need to be encouraged, that we need to stay strengthened in the word of God. And we're doing our best as a team uh, to make sure that we're able able to gather together, but also that we're encouraging you, that we are connecting with you in this period of time. You know, um, here's the thing, like as in, we just believe that God is going to get us through this, that He is for us, not against us. And, and I just believe that God is going to use this season and we're going to just say, wow, I can't believe God did this. But right now, wherever you are, whatever you're facing, whether it's um, a health situation, whether it may be with your job change, changing this week even, or, or maybe you're just struggling with your emotions, why don't we just pray right now and, and let's believe that God is actually even going to speak to us right now in this very moment. So Heavenly Father, I just thank you, God, Lord, because you are the Prince of Peace. Lord God, that you are our provider, God, Lord. And so whatever circumstances are happening in people's homes right now, in people's families right now, I speak it in the name of Jesus, Lord, that they will experience your peace in this season. Lord, they will experience your supernatural provision and we will experience you, your grace, your mercy and your goodness. Lord, we commit ourselves to you. We commit our church to you in the mighty name of Jesus and wherever you are, would you say amen? Amen. So if you grab your Bibles, we are going to look at 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I reckon this is a great time also to buy a paperback Bible. You're going to get sick of these screens that you're on. I'm just letting you know, just a heads up. Um, but here's the thing, like, as in, we're going to look at 1 Samuel 17 and the story of David and Goliath. And whether you've been in church a long time or a short time, I'm sure you would have heard this story of David and Goliath, you know, and sometimes they've used it in sporting terms. So maybe you've never heard of the story like in that, in the biblical context, but maybe you've heard it in sporting terms right? Like the big boxer versus the little guy or the little Indian cricketer who makes a lot of runs against the Australian cricket team. Come on, you got to laugh at this time and that makes my heart happy. But anyway, like as in David and Goliath is all about the little guy beating the big guy. And, and here's a quick biblical recap of what happens. Here we have the Israel and Philistine army camped out on, on mountaintops and they have a 
a valley in between them. And they were there for days and days. And what happened was is that the Philistines sent a giant to represent them represent them. And this giant named Goliath, he was three meters tall. He was the size of three fridges and a freezer. And pretty much what he would do was he would come out daily, actually twice a day. And he would say, hey, these are the rules of Fight Club. If anyone that can beat me will will become your slaves. But here's the thing. If I beat you, this is this giant saying this, if I conquer you, if I kill you, you will become our slaves. You know, the the Israelites were filled with fear. They were terrified of this big giant, this, this huge guy named Goliath. Until this young shepherd boy came along, heard this story and heard this guy, this giant saying all these things and said, I will have none of this. And to cut a long story short, David hears these threats and decides I'm going to respond differently to this army. And all of a sudden he goes out and he defeats this giant. He defeats Goliath with a slingshot and a couple of stones. I want to tell you something, church. We will defeat this virus. Just like this giant, we will get through this. God is going to turn this for His good and we will experience victory in this season. Potentially right now you're sitting, maybe having a latte or maybe you're eating breakfast at the moment or maybe you're sitting on your couch or in your bed and you're going, but Jace, I've just, I've just lost my job. Like as in uh, this, things are going from bad to worse. Maybe you're just kind of going, you know, th- this virus just seems too scary, too much and too overwhelming. I, I want to tell you that that this is how the army, the Israelite armies fell. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 11, this is what it actually reads. It says, On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. Other versions say that they were discouraged, that they were depressed and intimidated. Here's the thing though, like, although they were experiencing this, you and I, we know the end of the story, right? We know that the, the Goliath was defeated. We know that this giant was conquered. Fear was looked square in the eye and was defeated that day by a young boy named David. Today, I want to look at this passage in, in 1 Samuel chapter 17. And, and I want to just actually talk about this idea of facing our giants, facing life's giants, facing our fear and how we can do this. Because here's the thing. We have this army of men who witnessed this giant, right? And they did nothing. But yet we see this young boy, this young shepherd boy named David, who saw the same giant responded in such a surprising way. You know, how did he do that? Where did he find, where did he muster up all this courage from? Why was he so different? You know, I believe in this season that where this virus is contagious, so is fear. Fear is also contagious. And we have an opportunity. I believe to some degree as Christians, we have an obligation to respond differently, to respond in faith. You see, we have been called to walk by faith, not by sight. We have been called to live with the hope of Jesus in us. And instead of spreading fear in this season, we must spread faith, hope and love. We must spread the message of hope because we have Jesus inside of us. We have the hope of the world. We know the hope of the world. But how do you face life's giants? What do you do when you are facing fear? Let's talk about three things that we can learn from David. Let's talk about three things that we can learn from 1 Samuel chapter 17. I hope you're taking notes and I hope you're ready to hear this. The first thing that we can do when facing fear is that we need to be careful what you hear. We need to be careful with what we hear in this season. When facing fear, be careful what you hear. This is what it says in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 10. Then the Philistine, this Goliath, said, Hey, this day I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines' words, hear this, Saul and the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. Now let's just look a few verses later. Verse 16, it says, For 40 days, for 40 days, the Philistine came forward day and night 
and took his stand. I want to tell you something. The army were conditioned by what they heard. They were frozen. In other words, they were paralyzed by fear. They were hearing the words of Goliath and they couldn't move. They, they had no idea what to do. All they were conditioned by his threats and his intimidation. Right now, wherever you look, whoever you speak to, besides hi, how are you, it's corona. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, as in the next line is always about the coronavirus. It is everywhere we look. It is everywhere we go. The enemy is an opportunist. The enemy is an opportunist and he is actually using this virus to breed fear into people. But this is what it says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us power and love and self-discipline. God does not deal in fear. He deals in faith. And as people who believe in Jesus, this is the moment that we need to shine with our faith. L let me put it another way. Faith is reality plus God. Fear is reality minus God. I, I want to ask you the question this morning. Are you living a life of faith? Are you living a life plus God at the moment? Or are you living a life potentially in fear? The minus, the, the concerns, the worries are just getting too much. Hey, let's be people of faith in this season. This is what it says in verse 23. Uh, this is what David was talking about with the soldiers. He says, as he was talking to them, as he was talking to the soldiers, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from the lines and shouted his usual defiance. This is now a part of their story, right? This is the habit that happened every day, twice a day. And David, watch the last line in this, and David heard it. And David heard it. Verse 24, whenever the Israelites saw this man, they fled with great fear. They fled. I want to tell you that David that day was visiting the camp. He was dropping things off. Therefore, he was not conditioned like the other soldiers. He was not living in the same fear and paralyzed with fear like the other soldiers. He was not conditioned by it. So here's the thing. You can visit fear in this season, but let's not be people who live in fear in this season. There are going to be moments, and I'm sure David looked at Goliath and goes, hey, that guy's pretty big. I know I've defeated a lion before. I know I've defeated a bear before, but this guy's huge. Like as in, I'm sure he had a moment of fear and intimidation, but he didn't live there. He was not conditioned by fear, but he lived in faith. The thing about David was he heard, he never heard Goliath spiel. He wasn't tuned into channel seven. He didn't know what Fox News was saying. He wasn't conditioned by fear, but he knew who God was. He knew who his God was and how he had come through in the past and how he would come through today. I believe in this period of time, we need to know the news. We need to be informed by the news, but let's not be formed by what we hear in the news. Let's not be changed. It should not change our behavior. It should not change how we function and how we love and how we're generous. I want to encourage you, church, be careful what you hear in this season. Be careful what you hear. If you're feeling scared right now, hear the word of the Lord. Hear this scripture today, Deuteronomy 31.8. It says, the Lord himself goes before you and he will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. If you're worried and anxious right now, maybe you lost your job or, or maybe you're just kind of worrying about the future. Philippians 4, 6, hey, do not worry about anything, that, but pray about everything. Take your needs, take what you need to God, ask Him, but thank Him for what He has already done. It goes on to say, then you will experience God's peace. That is the recipe for peace. Go, go to God, tell Him about it, be thankful for what He's already done and allow supernatural peace to touch your life right now. His peace will exceed anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts. I just believe right now we need to be people that guard our hearts in this season. Maybe you're thinking, how am I going to pay the
the next bill. I have no idea how I'm going to put food on the table. Hey, let's believe Philippians 4.19. And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches. Maybe you're worried about getting sick and you're going, what if my family, what if my parents, what if my cousins or someone else in another country gets sick? I want to tell you, claim Psalm 18.2 in this season. The Lord is my rock. In other versions, it actually says the Lord is my protector. He is my fortress and my deliverer. Be careful what you hear. Make sure in this time that you embrace the word of God. Be entrenched in the word of God. What else do you do when facing life's giants? What else do you do when facing fear? Not only do you need to be careful what you hear, but be careful what you say. Be careful what you say. This is what it says in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 25. It says, have you seen this giant? These are the soldiers talking amongst themselves and to David. He's, they're saying, have you seen this giant? The message version puts it like this. They say, have you ever seen anything like this? This sounds like a lot of the conversations we're having at the moment. Have we ever experienced anything like, this is nuts. This is crazy. This coronavirus is everywhere. This army was consumed by fear. Not only were they paralyzed by it, but they were consumed by fear. They were either running from Goliath or they were talking about Goliath. They were Goliath was everywhere in their eyes. Like they could not run from him. They could not get away from him. He was everywhere. They were either running or they were talking about him. I want to tell you that the enemy rules through fear because he is full of fear and he uses fear to control us. Right now, he is using fear to control you from doing God's will. And so here's the thing. I believe that potentially we need to make sure that we're not filled with fear because I think there was a soldier amongst the Israelite army that could have stepped up. I believe that there was a good fighter that could have taken Goliath. It didn't have to be David. But here's the problem. They were consumed by fear. Fear stops us. From doing things. You see, fear stops us from stepping up to the plate and fighting the giant and facing fear. It is fear that stops us from being generous and makes us hoard and buy too much toilet paper. It is fear that makes us run away from life's giants and not step up and, and face it with faith. When we are consumed by fear, it changes what we do and it changes what we say. Be careful what you say. You know, I, whenever you need a good illustration, um, you, you should ask your wife because that's what I did. And it was a terrible decision, to be honest, because I, I said to Alyssa, I go, babe, like, what, what am I saying at the moment? Like, what do I sound like at the moment? And without, I don't even think she thought about it for like three seconds. She was like two seconds. And two seconds later, she's just going, oh, you keep saying this and this. And these were the things that she said. She goes, she, she said, we ke you keep saying things like, this is really hard at the moment, or this is really bad, or when will this happen? end and I was like going oh man I should not have asked her this question you know <laughs> like as in but but I decided in that moment that I've got to flip the script I have to change what I say we I've decided to say things like hey you know what we're gonna get through this season we've got to go through this season we've got to go through this here's the thing to some degree we have to embrace what is happening to us we can't go around it we can't go over it we I can't even go under it we've got to go through this but thank God we've got the good shepherd that walks us through with us, walks through this fear, walks through this hard with us. I, I, I've also decided to say things like, you know what? I wonder what God is up to. I believe something good will come from this. It is time to flip the script. You know, I would encourage you, even with your families around the dinner table or, you know, while you're watching TV, whatever you're doing, like, why don't you just tr try and take a break? Maybe it's a couple of hours a day where you don't speak about this virus. Don't speak about the impact that it has had on your family. Take a break. Talk about the future. Start planning things that you're going to do after this time passes because it's going to pass. I want to tell you that, and I know it could be hard right now, but instead of talking about how big and bad this virus is, start speaking about how big and great your God is. Start speaking about how good He has been in your 
past, how he has been with you. You know what? Just begin to thank him for the roof that you've got over your head, the food that you've got on your table. Thank him for the friends that you have in your life, the support that you have. Thank him for what he has already done. Look at verse 26 in 1 Samuel 17. It says, David asked these men near him, what will be done to the man who kills this Philistine? When David saw this giant, he was already talking about what happens after this guy. He wasn't thinking defeat. He was thinking, hey, after victory, hey, what, what do I get? Like, what is happening here? He was always looking to the other side. David's script was ingrained in the, his confidence in God. That's what it's about. When, when we see defeat, like as in we're thinking, oh, like if this happens, if this virus stops, he was thinking when this virus stops. You know, in this period of time, let's talk about when this finishes, when this comes to completion. A cure is on the way. This too shall pass. He says later on in verse 37, the Lord who rescued me from the lion's paw and the bear's paw will also rescue me from the hands of this Philistine. His script was faith-based. He knew who his God was. He knew where his power came from. Make sure you know who God is in this season. Make sure you know his capability. Make sure that you know his power. This is what it says. Our God is powerful. Psalm 147 verse 5. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. Isaiah 54. What does it say? It says, no, mep, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You know, it also says in Romans 8, it says, Our God works all things for our good. Psalm 118 verse 6, it says, The Lord is with me, I will not fear. You know, it says, do not fear or fear not in the Bible. It says it about 365 times. We were not built to fear. We were built for faith in God. Be careful what you say when facing fear. Be careful what you say. You know, make sure in this season that we are prophetically speaking faith, not fear. Proverbs 18.21, this is what it says, the tongue has the power of life and death. Hey, let's be a church. Let's be families. Let's be life groups. Let's be a generation, a community that will say, you know what? Let's, we're going to speak life. We're going to speak cure. We're believing that we serve a God of the breakthrough, the miraculous, and he is going to come through in this season. My final thought that I want to share with you is, so the first two points was, hey, be careful what you hear. Be careful what you say. But my final thought is this, and I believe to, this is the most important one. It's remember whose fight this is. Remember whose fight this is. I want to tell you that David knew whose fight this was from the very start to the very end. David knew that this was God's fight. While Goliath hurled of, um, offensive lines, when Goliath was attacking with his words, while Goliath literally had swords, spears, and javelins, right? I want to show you David's response. He looked fear in the eye, and this is what he said. He said, David said to the Philistines, you come against me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Almighty God, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. He goes on and he says, This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I will strike you down and cut off your head. He's talking about cutting off his head even though he didn't even have a sword on him. Think about this and look at verse 47. It says, And everyone assembled here. I believe this is a, a prophetic thing. The world will know that he, the Lord rescues his people, not by sword and not by spear, this is the Lord's battle and he will give us victory. We will experience victory because of God. David always knew this was God's fight. This virus, it's God's battle. He will deliver us. He will give us victory. He will rescue us in this season. We just need to put our faith. We need to put our hope in him. There's going to be a time where, where this becomes our testimony. 
This becomes our story that we get to tell people that, 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 that come before us and after us, that we get to say, hey, you know what? God came through. We give God the glory for this. This is what happened to me personally. This is what happened in our church community. God rescued us. So let's recap really quickly what we've learned today. How do you face your giant? How do you face fear? Well, firstly, be careful what you hear. Secondly, be careful what you say. And finally, remember whose fight this is. You know, we're about to sing a song, which I believe this song is actually going to seal this message that we've just heard by our worship team. But, but before we do that, we would love um, to make sure that we give everyone here watching us the opportunity to become a follower of Jesus. And I believe the ultimate rescue was actually not from a giant and not from fear, but the ultimate rescue that we've ever experienced was from sin. Because God has already defeated sin, past, present and future. And the greatest message that you could ever hear is that God loved the world so much that He sent His Son Jesus so that whoever would believe in, in Him, Whoever would say, you know what, Lord God, I give you my heart. Whoever would trust in him, they would not perish, but they would receive eternal life. His son Jesus died on the cross for all our sins, for all of mankind. Whoever is hearing this, he died for you. And the best response, the best words we could ever say to him is that we could believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths, Lord God, I make you Lord and Saviour. Of my life. Lord God, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. So right now, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you are hearing this message, I just believe that you have a great opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the hope of humanity, to receive eternal life this morning. So if that's you, wherever you are right now, would you just close your eyes and bow your heads? Because this is what I'm believing, that potentially you're sitting with a family member that doesn't know God. And if you want to give your heart to Jesus, we're going to all repeat this prayer wherever you are after me. And we're just going to trust God that He's going to make a way. He's going to meet us where we're at. Repeat this after me, everyone, wherever you are. Lord Jesus, today I surrender my life. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for eternal life. Today I make you Lord. Today I make you Savior. Amen. You know, if you made this decision today, I want to tell you that we are so happy for you and welcome to the family of God. We hope you enjoyed today's sermon. Here's just a few more reminders. Firstly, if you have made a decision for Jesus, congratulations, we're so excited for you. Please fill out the Next Steps form and our team will be in touch to give you your next steps. Secondly, if you have a prayer request, please let us know. We would love to pray for you in this season. Thirdly, to join a life group and keep socially connected in this period of physical disconnection, you can fill out this form here and our team will plug you into a group to start doing life with. And finally, if for any reason you would like to contact us, please click here. Thanks for watching. We can't wait to see you again next Sunday.